I'm going to show you one of my favourite decorative stitches now and I know a lot of people don't like this because they look it up in a book and in a stitch guide it's usually a picture of the stitch and it's got numbers all the way around it and you follow the numbers and it's a bit of a nightmare. So I'm going to show you how to do it without the need for those numbers at all and it's dead easy. Actually you'll never need the book again. So this is what it looks like here, really pretty. It's um, usually in a square so you can have an odd number of holes or an even, I'll do one of each. Um, and you can make them any size you like as well. You get really big with these. And I'm going to do it in a variegated thread as well because it will add a little bit of extra dimension. You'll see that come. But if you stick to the same rule each time, you will never need the book and all the awful numbers around the side. So I'm just going to start my thread off. So let's do one in here. And I'm going to do um, even numbers first principle is the same it's just slightly different at the end and what we're going to do first is make a great big cross now what is important is that this is square so it's the same number of holes across as it is down so I'm going to count across and then I'm going to count down so I'm going to count down and then across it doesn't matter which way I'm going this way so I know it fits with this so one two three four five six seven eight and then I'm going to count across eight including that hole one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that should be diagonally across all of the holes in the middle. So just check it is. If you don't get that bit right, the rest of it won't work. So do just take your time to count that it's square. And I'm going to make a great big cross. Now I've got quite a long thread here. You can start and stop this stitch. Um, as long as the thread goes through to the back, you can change a thread. But I want to have one thread really, so you can see the pattern of the variegated thread. So we'll make a great big cross first. Now it's just important to remember where you went down, which side you went down with your needle on, because we're going to come up on the same side. So you can forget all those numbers now. So we're going to work at the corners and work towards the middle. So I came down here, so I'm going to stay on the same side of the square. So think about the square. And we came down on this side, so I'm going to come up here. Now because it's in the corner, you could say we've gone down on the bottom, so I could come up there as well. It doesn't matter. So come up in either one of these corners next to where you took your thread down. You want to make sure that the square stays so all the stitches are going to be in this row of holes and then this row across the top. We don't want to come outside that square shape now. So I'm going to come up in the corner next to that corner stitch as far away from the point that I went down. So I went down here, you go to the other side of where you went down and you come up in the next available hole. I'll go over that a few times so you can get that. And then all I'm going to do is follow this stitch across to the other side. Follow the bit all the way across. Make sure you know where the edge of your square is and take your needle down in the hole there. Don't bring it out here because you've gone outside your square. So we're thinking this is the square. So it follows the thread across until it meets the hole that's on that side of the square. So just follow that across and you'll see how this starts to build up. Now we stay on the same side of the square. So we're at the bottom now. We don't come over here. This is the top. We're on the bottom. So we stay on the bottom and we come up as far away from that point as we can. So the opposite side in the next available hole, which is there. We follow this stitch across to the other side. So we follow it across to here. Here's the side of my square. Here's the next available hole. The needle will go down there. So I'll actually put that in place so you can see. So that follows that stitch across to the other side. So you're putting crosses in each time, but we're just going to work towards the middle of each side. Now, down on the right hand side, so I'm going to come up on the right hand side in the furthest hole away from where I went down, which is that one. Not out here, because you've broken the shape of the square. So follow the row of holes down, next available hole. Now you're thinking, well, where do I go now? So you just follow that stitch to the opposite side. And you don't have to do any counting if you can learn this method. If you follow the book, you have to follow um, the numbers across it tells you one to two three to four which is great but if you have to stop in the middle for some reason you can't remember where you are you have to start again this way you don't so i know my threads down on that side so we stay on the same side so we're at the top of the square we go to the opposite corner opposite side there and we come up 
bit of a knot in my thread. Follow that across to the other corner, next available hole. Stay on the same side of the square, we're on the left hand side, so come up on the left hand side, the furthest hole away from where you went down. Follow the stitch across, down in the next hole. Stay on the same side, we're at the bottom of the square, so we come up on the bottom of the square, that opposite hole. Follow it across, down on the right hand side, up on the right hand side. And if you can get that pattern in your head, I think if you start with your big cross and then just head for one of the corners, it doesn't really matter which corner you start in, because often getting these stitches going is the hardest part. Follow it across to the opposite side. Can't go anywhere else with that stitch. As soon as I go somewhere else with it, I'm coming across it and changing the shape. So we're getting this kind of grid pattern with these stitches. Stay on the same side, come up in the next hole. And you'll see your holes are getting, the stitches are getting closer and closer together now, but just keep that pattern going across to the other side. Just got one hole left now, so I'm on the bottom. That's the only hole there that doesn't have a stitch in it. So that's the last stitch. When you've filled all the holes, you're on your last stitch. And this should apply to all the sides now. So we come across here, down in that hole. One more hole with no stitch in it, and that's that one there. Come up there, cross to the other side, that hole. This side has a hole with no stitch in, which is that one there. And then this should be the last stitch now. So I follow that across. There is the hole with no stitch in it there. So down there, and that's the last one. So there we have a completed Norwich stitch. So that's an even number of holes and I'll just show you that again. It's the same process but with an odd number of holes. So let's put one in here. And you can see what a really nice pattern this variegated thread makes. It's a really nice thread to use for this stitch. So I counted, I'll double check how many holes, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight holes. So I'll do seven holes now. So I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Count up seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And put your cross in. So make sure this is square, that's important. If you don't make it square, it goes okay until you get to the end and then you have some sides that have got holes left. I'm wondering why it doesn't work. So I've gone down in this hole here. So I could either come up on the top there or down on the left hand side here, it doesn't really matter, come up in the left. Thread keeps going, this is a little bit of a long thread for this, but I didn't want to change while I'm showing you. So I've come up on the left, I follow this across to the other side, keep your square shape. Now I'm on the top of the square, so we stay on the top of the square but go, coming up in the hole that's furthest away from where I went down on the opposite side of that row. Follow it across to the other side, down in the hole. Stay on the same side, so on the right hand side, up in the furthest hole away. Follow it across. You're on the bottom, stay on the bottom, come up near the corner follow that across. Now what happens with your holes in the middle now is that you won't have a spare one. You'll be sharing a hole because we've got an odd number but just keep that pattern going. So I've got one hole left now, that hole is empty. So we'll make sh sure we keep going till we get all of the sides the same. Cr 
across. Right, now each side has got one hole empty. So you can either choose to stop there and leave that hole empty or you can put two stitches in the one hole. So I shall come up there. That's got one stitch in it. So the left hand side and the bottom have both now had all of the holes used. So I'm going to jump over to the right here. There's the empty hole in the middle. I'm just going to keep that stitch going. I'm going to go down into the centre there. So that's sharing that hole. So there's two stitches in the centre hole now. And then I'll do the same in this side, come up there and down in that centre hole. So they've both got two stitches in them. And you can see the square just gets bigger. So it's quite nice just to keep that going a little bit longer, share that hole there. And you get a bit more of the effect of the stitch. So the only difference is these ones have a single stitch in them. This one, the centre hole on each side shares the stitch. Just very quickly I can show you a small one because you can do these huge or tiny one two three four one two three four so we can do a tiny little ones as well so quite nice if you want to fill in an area with it but not necessarily have them all the same size it can look a bit regimented this just adds a bit more interest so change the sizes and I've left a gap between each of them so that you can see what I'm doing, but you could butt them right up to each other, share the holes and get a nice solid area. So that's all you'll see of that one. It's a tiny little one, but really nice texture. So if you can follow that method, you never need to remember the numbering system and you can do them any size you like anywhere. So that's called Norwich Stitch.